Well, finally, we're through all of the soft skills and administrative lessons, and we're going to move on to basic electricity, and we're going to take this all the way from uh, level one books into the level three. And so we're going to stay focused on electricity for the next course of instruction. So when we get all done, you're going to be able to take a look at a uh, schematic and wiring diagram like you see here and break it down like a roadmap and understand what all of those circuits mean, what they stand for, how to relate those to the equipment that you're looking at and and to read this like an electrical roadmap so you, to, to help you troubleshoot and identify what's wrong with um, the air conditioning or heating system that you're working on. But before we do that we need to just step back and start at the beginning and that's with and that is with uh, power generation and we get most of our power from coal generated plants nuclear plants and um, turbine dams and we also you know there's also wind generation that's coming up and solar but these are our primary power generators in the United States at this time the one thing to keep in mind here and why it's important to understand power generation is that the way all of the all of these methods provide power is by turning large windings inside of a generator and this is a very very simplified simple for instructional purposes illustration of what is inside of the nuclear plant or the uh, the dam as the water flows through and w all of these power generation sources are designed to turn a generator and a generator basically is has two magnets a north and a south pole magnet with windings of wire that turn inside of these lines of force magnetic lines of force Whenever you start cutting wires through magnetic lines of force, as they rotate through here, it generates an electrical current that can be measured by a meter. So on the small scale here, if you turn this by hand and move this, this, these windings through the magnetic lines of force, you would see this, this meter bounce back and forth here as it cut through those lines of force. So if you multiply this to a much grander scale, in a nuclear plant or in a uh, coal-fired plant, basically what they're doing is they're turning either magnets around windings of wire or they're turning the windings of wire inside of a magnetic field. And that pushes and pulls those electrons through here, creating the electric force. This is really important to understand when we get to the motor section, and we're gonna, we'll review it again, but basically that is what happens. So, so we take our primary generators here and we have those windings turning inside the magnetic lines of force and it starts out depending on how it's generated between 2400 and 23,000 volts and it goes to a, a substation that's just sitting right very near to the um, generating station and it goes through transformers which steps that voltage up to a higher voltage so that it can be trans they can um, transmit this electrical power through miles and miles of wires so they step this up considerably from a hundred thousand almost up to a million volts depending again on the design and the length of the of the transmission wires so this travels across the the country or you know for several several hundreds of miles until it hits a substation and then what it does is this substation now steps this voltage back down because we're a little bit closer to where this is going to be used and these are then it's sent through the transmission lines that you see in your neighborhood these are usually you'll see these big transmission lines on the side of the freeway and these are the ones you'll have in your neighborhood some of them are buried so it goes through the transmission lines until it comes to a residence and up on those transmission poles, there's a smaller transformer, and that steps the voltage down to what we use in, in our homes, which is 120 and 240 volts. And the other thing is, is remember, this is up at, at 
4,000 to 35,000 volts here. So it can go to a large and commercial building or an industrial area that uses higher voltages than what we use. So they'll have different transformers and those will usually be parked outside of the, uh, the building itself to, and designed for the, the specific building that um, it is serving rather than just the generic ones we see up on the uh, telephone poles. So once these high voltage lines come into our, and I call them a telephone pole, that's how old I am, the, um, the power lines. Okay, so once we come in, the high voltage lines come into the transformer out there on the, the pole, it steps the voltage down to 240 volts and then that feeds with our through our service line into the house on two wires. We got an 120 on one wire and a, a different phase of 120 on another. Don't worry about phases right now. Just know that it comes in on two lines, 120 each, and into the entrance box, and then it's distributed throughout the home to the outlets. And that you know the plug-in outlets that you have for your TVs, toasters and smaller appliances are 120. If you have an electric water heater and um, air conditioning, con condensing units with compressors, those are used by the 240 volt. Those are used, those use 240 volts. Okay, so we did cover safety in uh, the first course of instruction, but I can't stress this enough here that uh, this is what's going to end up killing you if you're not careful and and you are going to get shocked and you just need to make sure that you you reduce the amount of times and the chances of, your, of you getting shocked. So here's a couple um, examples of what to expect if you get shocked and one milliamp that's just a little tingling so if you're working with a 24 volt transformer and you get on a wire and your skin is damp you're going to get a slight tingling sensation it's not very comfortable five milliamps that's not very much but this is this is where you're going to get tagged most of the time right here and it's going to be a slight shock but that it's not going to feel very good and when they say the involuntary reactions can cause re result can result in other injuries that means you stick got your finger stuck in there and you get you get zapped and you jerk your hand out of the unit and peel the skin back on the top of your hand or you bash your elbow on something behind you that's when they're talking about other injuries this isn't going to kill you but this is going to wake you up i myself have never experienced either of these three right here but um, this is where you want to stay away from. And the thing is, when it says 1,000 milliamps and 4,300 milliamps, we're not looking at, we're only looking at 1 amp to 4.3 .3 amps. Most of the equipment that we work on has have circuit breakers that don't pop until you hit 15,000 milliamps or 20,000 milliamps or more. So you need to stay away from this. The other thing is the higher the voltage, the more chances of you ending up in this range right here. When you're in the 480 range of voltage and above, that is, that's not going to cause this little slight shock and jerking your hand out. The residential systems will, but if you got in big commercial systems, you're gonna, this is the range you're going to be in. You need to be extremely, extremely careful with, um, when you're dealing with this. It is, we, we tend to get complacent and we work around it all the time and you don't take the time to go shut the units off and double check everything. You really need to make sure that you do that. Okay, like I said, um, 600 volts and 482 is gonna, is gonna up the chances of it killing you, uh, once you if you get tagged. So you just, you know, we, we spend a lot of our time with our hands in residential equipment, which is 120 to 240, but uh, those can get you too if you have broken skin, um, if you have a cut on your hand, if it's wet outside, if you're kneeling on the ground and you don't have your, the rubber 
soles of your shoes insulating you and you're just ha and the, the ground is damp so you just need to make sure that uh, even on the residential systems you're paying attention can't stress this enough okay so you shut off the electricity at the source that means you don't go to the circuit breaker inside the house you go to the disconnect at the unit so you know for sure that it's off if you do have to disconnect the power at the uh, circuit breaker panel you need to make sure that you have a lockout tag and that lockout and tagging procedures you should have in place at the company that you're working for the other thing is is remember in the safety module on the one slide where the service disconnect was hot wired so you pull the service disconnect out think it's not think there's no power to the unit when in fact it is hot wired because the service disconnect was faulty and you stick your hands in there thinking that there's no power and you get shocked so you need to use your voltmeter all the time every time and triple check that the power is off and I wear leather gloves you can wear rubber gloves but leather uh, works as well to help protect from shock insulated tools and that means you use the power tools and that's what that's talking about and make sure that you that you have a good uh, grounding cord and it's in a GFI receptacle which will pop the breaker if there's any slight uh, current going to ground or through you or or you set it or you set it down in a puddle of water it's going to pop that ground fault interrupter and the other thing is is even though I do this all the time even though I make sure that the power's off. I check it with my meter. Before I grab any bare wire, I always short that wire to ground to make sure, triple sure, that there's no power on that wire. And that, like I said, don't kneel on the ground when making voltage measurements. If you can help it, you you uh, you want to make sure that you have the safety of your shoes would help insulate you from ground. And then also don't put two hands in the system because that that creates a, a uh, an easier path to ground if one hand is touching the case and the other is live it takes it through your chest and uh, right across your heart so you don't want to try and keep one hand outside the unit if you can and get rid of metal jewelry rings watches and bracelets okay so that's the end of the lesson if you have any questions about that about this lesson please go ahead and post it in the class forum or email me and I just want I can't stress enough please please make sure when we start talking about electrical and you start doing those these voltage measurements that you stay safe